Hi again, this is Andy, K4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisper and Lesson 5 in the General Class Operator Element 3 exam. In this lesson, we're going to be covering repeater regulations and third-party rules. Specifically, the G1E questions cover control categories, repeater regulations, harmful interference, third-party rules, and ITU regions. All right, let's get going. Which of the following would disqualify a third party from participating in stating a message over an amateur station? All right, of the possible answers, the, the correct one is the third party is a person previously licensed in the amateur service whose license had been revoked. And the way to tell this one out from the other ones is that this is the only possible answer that has something negative in it. So if the FCC revokes your license, you are not allowed to talk in the air, absolutely, period. When may a 10 meter repeater retransmit the 2 meter signal from a station having a technician class control operator? All right, the answer to this one is only if the 10 meter control operator holds at least a general class license. And I'm not a big fan of this question, and it requires a little bit of thought. To make it simple, any amateur can operate a repeater station. And the trick to this question is that the 10 meter privileges fall in the general class realm. So to send out a signal in the general class frequencies, you have to be at least a general class operator. Once again, I'm not a big fan of this question, but that's the answer. What kind of amateur station simultaneously retransmits the signals of other stations on another channel? All right, this is a repeater station. That's a pretty basic definition of a repeater station, which luckily is technician class review. So a repeater station is a kind of amateur station that simultaneously retransmits the signals of other stations on another channel. Which of the following conditions require an amateur radio station to take specific steps to avoid harmful interference to other users or facilities? All right, there are several conditions. When operating within one mile an FCC monitoring station, when using a band where the amateur service is secondary, when a station is transmitting spread spectrum emissions. And this is an all of the above question. So essentially, anytime your transmission has a higher than normal risk of interfering with an established priority transmission, there are specific things you need to do to prevent interference. And what will we'll help with this question is to recognize that the first two possible answers deal with FCC priorities, which you don't want to interfere with. So if two of the answers are likely correct, then it has to be all the possible answers are correct. So they're not trying to trick you, but um, this is an all of the above question. What types of pet messages for a third party in another country may be transmitted by an amateur station? Okay, the answer is only messages relating to amateur radio or remarks of a personal character or messages relating to emergencies or disaster relief. And this one compared to the other possible answers makes sense. So if you know that it's not going to be a free ride allowing any transmission, and since a third party is possibly not an, a licensed amateur, you know that traffic is not exclusively for licensed amateurs. Talking to foreign countries is part of the thrill of amateur radio, and that kind of helps you out with this question. Which of the following applies in the event of interference between a coordinated repeater and an uncoordinated repeater? The answer to this question is the licensee of the non-coordinated repeater has primary responsibility to resolve the interference. And this makes sense. So the guy who didn't do the coordinating is responsible for not interfering for some, with somebody who did. So it's kind of a, you know nature's law, common sense rule. So if you didn't coordinate, it's your responsibility to fix the problem. With which of the following is third-party traffic prohibited, except for messages directly involving emergencies or disaster relief communications? Well, the answer is any country other than the United States, unless there is a third-party agreement in effect with that country. And that answer is kind of stated in the negative. But essentially, if there's a third-party agreement, your third party is allowed to communicate with them. If there's not, you're not. North Korea is an example of one without a third-party agreement. So most countries, well, a lot of countries have them. So don't feel this is a big restriction at all. Which of the following is a requirement for a non-licensed person to communicate with a foreign amateur radio station from a US amateur station at which a licensed control operator is present? All right, so essentially this is third-party communications. The, the answer is the foreign amateur station must be in a country with which the United States has a third-party agreement. And this is the same answer as the previous question just framed in the positive. So you can only do third-party communications with countries that the United States has a third-party agreement with. There it is. What language must you use when identifying your station if you're using a language other than English in making a contact? So if you're making a contact in English or Spanish or Portuguese or Italian or whatever, and it comes time to identify yourself, you have to identify yourself if you're a U.S. amateur in English. 
So if you're a US amateur, you must use English to identify your station regardless of what language the rest of the conversation is. You can also use Morse code, but that may be a bit excessive. So if you just want to cut to the chase, just give your call in English. Which of the following is a permissible third-party communication during routine amateur radio operations? All right, here's this one. The answer is sending a message to a third party through a foreign station as long as that person is a licensed amateur radio operator. And this is sort of a weird one, and it's up for a little bit of interpretation, but it's a weird question. So you are not allowed to send third-party traffic to a station in a country the United States does not have third-party agreement with with one exception. If the third party you are trying to pass a message to happens to be a licensed amateur who is eligible be, to be the control operator of the station you are talking to, you're okay according to the Part 97. So this would be like trying to pass a message to a general class operator in a foreign country through another general class operator and it, it's tedious and it's kind of crazy. But this question is best if you just help eliminate some of the other answers. And if you remember that third party traffic can't deal with business and there are restrictions who you can talk to so you can't just talk to anyone that'll help out with this question a bit and that is the end of the G1E review and part one of lesson five if you have trouble finding part two you can go to hamwhisper.com and look under the ham courses page you'll find it under the lesson five G1E part two so take a break while you're taking your break grab a pencil and some paper and I will see you in part two